say and spell your name for me and your title. Keith, K-E-I-T-H, Mills, M-E-A-L-S, like three a day. And uh, my title is uh, uh, Regional Fisheries Biologist. And regional, would that be like North Mississippi or just? Northwest, yes, sir. So we got the press release that you all will be changing, you know, some fishing regulations of the of the big four lakes and I think Lake Washington as well. Uh, talk a little bit about what are those changes? Well, uh, I, I can't speak for Washington because I don't work in that area, but uh, the changes uh, on the flood control reservoirs, which is where I primarily work, uh, is going to be going from 15 limit to 10. Uh, the pole limit stays the same, and uh, boat limit for uh, boats that have three or more anglers in them is going to go to uh, uh, twenty from from forty to twenty five. What's the pole limit, if you remember? Uh, it's four poles per person. What prompted these changes? Well, uh, kind of a suite of things all kind of hitting together. Uh, we had some really high water years, uh, like 2018 through 2021. And uh, that uh, kept fish up in the bushes, uh, kind of protected them from anglers during uh, spring spawn and uh, you know provided extra nutrients and forage for the fish. And things were rocking along pretty well. And in 2022, uh, through present, the water levels have, you know, come down to more normal instead of going over emergency spillways and flood conditions they were come, they came down to more normal levels where the fish were not uh, as protected uh, we also have uh, some of our uh, oxbows our area oxbows that are not uh, doing too well because of uh, uh, influx of asian carp and uh, we've had some uh, waters that have closed to public access and also, um, we've had the uh, rather rapid growth of guiding industry, and you know, also the uh, implementation. Well, the the explosion of you know live scope and similar live sonar technologies since 2018, and it kind of all come together to, you know, just. Mm, Put us in almost an unsustainable harvest situation. And, um, you know, that's that's kind of the focus of my, my story. You know, um, I've read a few art articles, you know, there are, you know, pros and cons to, you know, live scoping or live mm -hmm. in our fishing. Uh, can you talk about, you know, if there are pros and cons to, you know, such such devices, such such technology? Well, we did a three-year study on the reservoirs, um, and <clears throat> we were looking at just our crappie anglers, and we went from 20% of our crappie anglers were using live sonar in 2021, and by 2023, we were up, we were up to 70%. Uh, so there was very rapid um, you know, adoption of this technology. And uh, we also found that, you know, the folks using live sonar were having harvest rates that's kept fish um, two to three times more than folks that didn't have it and uh, didn't have any, you didn't uh, make a difference in, in the size of fish being harvested. I understand some other states have found a difference in the size being harvested. But because we have a 12 inch size limit, we have a pretty narrow window of like 12 to 15 inch fish that are make up the bulk of our catch. So it's different if you had say a 10 inch limit or no size limit at all, where you would have a much larger size range of fish being harvested, then you could see the you know, more difference uh, of size with using, a, using live sonar. It's like a two-in-one question. So do you believe that live sonar is, you know, putting extra pressure on fish? And have you seen a increase or decrease in, you know, fish populations uh, possibly due to live sonar? Well, it's, it's, again, like I said, a combination of factors. Uh, when you 
fishing pressure, everybody talks about fishing pressure, but fishing pressure is a uh, related to lake size. So when you have the lakes being smaller with lower water levels, even if you have the same number of people fishing it, you're increasing the, the pressure. Um, so we had that going on at the same time. We had the expansion of the live sonar and guides and, you know, problems with, you know, other lakes not being available or not being uh, desired to fish at. So, you know, it just kind of like, of course, Arca Butler of the four reservoirs, Arca Butler in, in 2023 was basically has been drained below Winter Pool. So, you know, we only have three of the four reservoirs that are being fished right now. So it's, it's you know, put a lot of more pressure on the three remaining lakes. You know, people come all all around the world, you know, just to to fish the the big oh, yeah. the big lakes. So when you know you got three, like you just say, you got three, only three of the big four lakes being fished on top of increased um charters on the lakes, on top of live scoping, are, are the fish able to keep up with reproduction? Our reproduction is good. We don't have a problem with reproduction and and what we call recruitment, which is growth from, you know, eyeballs to harvestable size. Uh, the problem is being harvested faster than they can grow. It's a, what fisheries biologists call growth over fishing, is you start to see a reduction in uh, the age range and the size range of the fish in the population, which we already started seeing uh, in the last year or so. Does technology like this, you know, almost mess up the experience for, you know, just fishing in general? Because I've never fished behind sonar, but I see people on YouTube who use it just like, they can like pinpoint like the fish that they want to catch. Right. It's like, chase it all over the lake. Right, right. Instead of, I grew up just fishing, just walking around the entire bank and sometimes catching nothing. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> right. So what does this mean for the future of fishing? Well, uh, you asked about the pros of it. Um, one thing is uh, it's brought a lot more younger anglers, in, younger anglers into the sport because, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, we just had a 19 year old what uh win a bassmaster uh event uh, just in the last couple of weeks so you, you're getting a lot of technologically savvy young people getting into the sport because they got a you know something they can you know they're familiar with and that they can use and and um to some extent, gain an advantage on folks that have been relying on decades of experience. Uh, but um, for, and whenever you um, have a change in technology this sudden that was been uh, adopted this rapidly, especially in a fishery like crappie, uh, that's almost entirely consumptive, you know, you keep it, need it, take it home. Uh, it, it causes, uh, you know, it can cause problems uh, with the fishery. Uh, we just had, we, I'm saying our agency, uh, several of our fisheries folks, including myself, uh, were in on a uh, nationwide Zoom call just a couple of weeks ago. And this is hitting every state in the country and they're having to deal with it. And consumptive fisheries like crappie, like walleye, um, things like that, uh, sunfish, um, they're very concerned, uh, especially the northern states. Uh, there was a biologist from Wisconsin was saying, you know, we're not like down south. It takes us 10 years to grow a 10-inch crappie. And, you know, we can grow a 12 inch crappie on these reservoirs in about three and a quarter years, three and a half years. So, you know, we're able to replace fish a lot faster uh, 
than they can up north. So, you know, we have to, we talking about fisheries biologists and, and fisheries agencies have to respond to make sure that the resources are not, you know, negative, negatively impacted. How do you fishery guys, you know, stay ahead of the game? Because sooner or later is going to be some other technology that come, that comes out and you know yeah. and you may be at this at the table again how do y'all prepare for stuff like this it's hard to prepare for stuff like that because um garmin came out with you know live scope just live scope but then it, in 2015 but it came out with the panoptics live scope in 2018 and that was a real game changer and you know, this is expensive equipment and we kind of looked at each other and it's like, well, not many people are going to buy this because it costs several thousand dollars and uh, we weren't too concerned about it. And then it was popping up everywhere. And like I told you earlier, you know, 70 percent of our crappie anglers were using it. Some of them have more money in the electronics than they do in their boat and their, and their motor and sometimes the truck pulling it. <laughs> But, but uh, um, you know, they know it's, it's like I tell people, it's selling because it works as advertised. So um, I've, I've talked with other folks and I say it's kind of like an arms race. You know, you, you, the technology changes and we have to react to that. Um, we had um, about 20 years ago, people were, shifting to multiple pole instead of just single pole fishing they were using multiple poles trolling and that kind of exploded in the you know early to mid 2000s and uh, you know we had to react to that uh, as it was expanding you you have to you have to have kind of your pulse on what's going on of course we're always doing sampling uh, of the fish population the habitat and uh, the fishery itself, you know, electrofishing, uh, trap netting, uh, other, you know, looking at age and growth, things like that. So that we're uh, monitoring what's going on with the fish population so that we can make uh, informed decisions on what needs to be done. Uh, what, what we're seeing happening from, you know, this change in technologies to what we need to do to counteract it and, you know, it's just basically you 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 just have to cut the pie in smaller slices. Do you think it'll ever be, you know, because you, you mentioned so many charters are, are popping up, you think it'll ever be at a point to where the state could possibly, you know, <clears throat> the, the amount of charters that may that may um could even start? Uh well, we instituted a guide license last year and uh and I'm not sure exactly how many, but we had, we sold over a hundred, I think last year, uh, guide licenses and, uh, you know, that's statewide. I don't know how many of them are on those four lakes, well, three lakes, no. but it, you know, it's a pretty good chunk uh, of those. And uh, we're not looking at regulating them uh, other than, you know, keeping tabs on, uh, how many there are, that's kind of our way of, and, um, you know, if the fishing gets bad, and, and this is where the whole uh, economics of things comes in, if the fishing gets bad, the charters are going to drop off, you know, the, the fishing, the fishermen are going to go away. Uh, and uh, we're trying to prevent that from happening. What does the future look like? for the future of, you know, crappie fishing in those uh, four lakes with, you know, new technology emerging? We're already seeing a shift in attitudes. Uh, again, one of the uh, positive aspects of live sonar is you can see the fish, whereas before you could not. And, um, we're seeing the fish get spookier. Uh, the anglers are noticing that, you know, we can't catch everyone. 
Uh, and they're also noticing that it's a finite resource. You know, when when even with regular sonar before, you know, live sonar, you could see the little blips on, on your screen, but you couldn't tell what they were really. Now you can kind of identify them, especially if you're good at it. You can identify them by species pretty much by where they are in the water column and how they move and how they swim. And um, you're also uh, getting a feeling for, gosh, you know, they're not everywhere. They're concentrating in certain areas and there's not as many as, you know, I thought there were. I, you know, without live sonar fishing is kind of like a magic hat that folks just think you keep pulling the rabbit out of it. And um, with live sonar, you can see that, you know, the, the, the hat is finite. And we're seeing more and more of a shift of folks starting to release keeper size fish, especially big fish. Um, some folks are tagging fish um, to see if other folks are catching them again, and they are. Uh, you know, it's it's just like, you know, bass fishing is totally different than crappie fishing because bass fishing went down the harvest road back, you know, in the 70s and 80s and decided that, you know, we need to be less harvest oriented to the point that now bass anglers rarely keep bass at all. Crappie anglers are, like I said, much more, you know, consumptive oriented. Uh, I don't see that, you know, people are ever going to be just catching and releasing crappie. Uh, but I think there's going to be more um, what what they call selective harvest, you know, keep what you need. You know, don't don't try, try and, you know, catch as much as you can and feed all your neighbors and all this sort of stuff uh, that a lot of people use as an excuse to go fishing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we all know those folks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just, just a little more um, conservation-minded mindset. Mr. Keith, I, I thank you so much. If that is, the, Do you think we can add anything else? I think we covered a, an awful lot of it. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, you know, every situation is different. Uh, some states have much more fertile waters or slower growth rates and stuff like that. We're kind of in the, you know, the sweet spot of crappie fishing here in, in the Mid-South, particularly here in, on, and we historically had big crappie on these reservoirs and we're just trying to maintain what we have. And, uh, you know, you can you can go anywhere in the country and catch either size crappie, just about. But these lakes can produce big crappie because they have really fast growth rates, and that's why all these people are coming from all over to come down here and fish. <laughs>